Hello fiber friends, I am Cherise Spain of Sew Hooked on Treasures and today I'm hoping to answer all your questions about how I added a quilt block to the back of a shirt. In case you missed the post, here's the shirt, here's the block. This is my Stay Focus quilt pattern shrunk tremendously in order to fit onto the back of a simple cotton v-neck shirt. I wanted a way to capture how special this block was because it was actually my first published quilt pattern. So. I have the quilt, I have the pillow, but I wanted something that was a little different to make it stand apart from the rest of them. And as I was scrolling through my rabbit hole of Instagram posts, um, I came across Ruthlessly Handmade, who had sewn uh, quilt blocks that appeared to the back of a denim jacket. I thought, oh my goodness, this is super cool. Yes, this is it. So I grabbed my notebook, I grabbed my pencil, and got to work. And this is the result. Now, the cool thing is that it's not just for my quilty friends. I am also a crocheter, and I know there are a lot of crocheters out there and even that are following and probably watching this video. This is for you too. You can take your favorite granny square, motif, whatever the case may be, and you can add them to clothing as well. So stay tuned, stick around. You're gonna to wanna to watch this too. Now, what do you need to get started? First decide on your article of clothing because if you're using a t-shirt versus a jacket versus a pocket of your favorite jeans, you're gonna need a different size. Uh, so be mindful of that. Start with the article of clothing you want, then you know what size to create your piece. I chose to start with a simple long sleeve cotton shirt this time. And I wanted to capture the star block that's on the open eye of my logo. I talked yesterday in my IG Quilt Fest post about why this block is so special to me. Uh, so I won't go into that here. But I have taken some of my favorite fabrics. Um, these are some Riley Blake Designs Basics. So we have your Kisses Basics. You have the Rose Gold uh, Basics and the awesome and just use for anything confetti cottons in the gray and the pink over here. So you've chosen your piece, you've assembled your block, yay, you're almost there. My square here is about eight and a half inches square. I didn't want to necessarily overpowering, especially on a lightweight shirt, so I kept that in mind and kept it to just at eight and a half inches. You will also need some heat and bond or any, si uh, any kind of two-sided fusible pins and uh, a plain uh, uh, solid cotton. Now, it does not have to be a solid for um, my crocheting and even knitting friends. I'm sorry, I can't leave you out here. It does not have to be a solid. So you can take this opportunity to choose a coordinating color that pops. You can choose uh, even one that has prints that complements the motif or the granny square that you're doing. So you have a bit more flexibility, usually for the quilters that are out there. You don't want something that's going to show through uh, the fabrics potentially that are in your block. So uh, just a plain, Solid cotton is all you need there. Once you've assembled your piece, you are going to pin it to your clothing. Um, be mindful with knits and cottons. They are super stretchy, so be careful with your pinning. Uh, you don't want it to get sewn on and then end up all kinds of wonky. Yes, that would not be very comfortable to wear. So make sure you pin it securely. I even use my birdie pins. They, I call them my Riley pins because of the Riley Blake bird. But um, I've even used those here. And I have pinned it all the way around. Now, how do you sew it on? Options. My preference is. Now, I'm sure there could be other techniques out there, so please don't get me wrong. If this is not the end all be all by any means. I am, for this one, I'm just going to simply sew it around the outer edge of the square. I kind of like a rougher edge, a rougher look, so it's okay if I get some strings and threads that are coming off and it starts to look a little frayed around the edge, that's okay for me. If you like a cleaner edge, you can also do a zigzag stitch, a small zigzag stitch, a little closer together so it comes out with a bit more satin type of stitch all the way around too. In the center, you can, uh, depending on the material of the clothing you're using, stitch in the center. For this one, uh, in particular, I would not be. 
but if you have more pieces, maybe if it's a little heavier for denim jackets, fleece jackets, sweatshirts, where your fabric is a little heavier, I would take the opportunity to uh, stitch a little bit more, depending on whatever your block or your uh, crocheted piece looks like. So you could do a simple around the edge of, like star in this case, or a circle of the medallion. Uh, just be careful uh, not to overstitch on lighter sort of fabrics. You can also, um, for quilt blocks, when you're on a heavier item, denim jackets, fleeces, things like that, you can take the opportunity to even add a, a leather layer of whether it's felt or thin batting, fusible fleece, whatever, and that will give you a little bit extra cushion to add some dimension with some more quilting. So you can have fun with that. You can add some free motion in there. We really do it up. Just be careful that, the, of course, the more stitches you add, the heavier it does become. But with heavier garments, that is definitely possible and looks fantastic. So once I've applied this and sewn it on, pins come out, it's ready to go. It's really that simple. And I can throw in the wash, uh, just like I would any of my other clothing. Um, if I'm using crochet, I'd be careful of what type of yarn I used, um, whether or not how I washed it. So stick with your yarn, washing instructions for how you wash your shirt once it's applied. Also, if you caught my video on printing on fabric at home, I'm also going to add on the front my label here. This is what the label I use for my quilts and crochet projects. And I printed it on home on my uh, inkjet printer. So check out the video on how I did that. But I'm going to apply this the same way I did, or I'm going to, the box on the back too. So very simple. This is a easier, maybe slightly more economical way of adding your logo and your special touches to your clothing without spending as much money for it to be printed. And it just, it's homemade, which we'll be left to do anyway, right? So uh, any questions, please feel free to comment below. I'd be more than happy to answer them. I hope you have enjoyed this and it has been helpful to you. I would love to see your work as well. Again, thank you so much for the inspiration to Ruthlessly Handmade. You are fantastic and amazing. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.